My watch face changes when I'm home, at the gym, traveling, or even driving without me doing anything. But that's just the beginning because there are 21 settings I changed that together make a huge difference. And let's start with notifications because there's a lot to fix here. For starters, by default, when you have an unread notification, you'll have a small red dot at the top of your watch screen. And this will only go away once you swipe down to view your notifications. And if you're like me and don't want that, you can easily turn it off by going to notifications in the watch app and disabling the notifications indicator. Another thing that's super annoying is the constant mindfulness reminders that pop up every hour or so. And if you're also not a fan of those, we can turn them off by scrolling down to mindfulness and disabling notifications. And as if these weren't enough, the watch also reminds you to stand every 50 minutes. And as much as I appreciate the effort, I don't think I've ever actually gotten up because of that, so that's getting turned off as well. And we can do that by going to activity and disabling stand reminders. All right, so by default, when you're watching TV or listening to music, your watch will automatically bring up the smart stack so you can easily control whatever you're playing. But more often than not, I would rather see my watch face. Plus, I can easily get to my smart stack by swiping up on the screen. So I disable this feature altogether by going to smart stack and toggling off auto launch live activities. And while we're here, let's clean up these little widgets because chances are the ones you actually want to see here aren't the ones that come preloaded by default. And we can remove those by long pressing on them and then tapping the minus button. And now you can add the widgets that are actually useful to you. For me, that's my car battery, my calendar, a couple of home automation scenes, and my pedometer so I can keep track of my steps. And I also changed their order. The first widget I keep at the top is my calendar widget. And what's cool about it is that it shows my full schedule, not just the next event. So if I have six events today, it'll show me all six of them in order. This lets me see everything I have planned without having to pick up my phone. And everything else goes below that. This is a great spot for stuff you want to keep an eye on, but not enough to justify them always being on the watch face. Plus, it's super easy to get here with the double tap feature. More on that later. Alright, so out of the box, it's kind of hard to find a specific app. The grid view is a mess, and while you can still switch to a list view, it's still not ideal when you're trying to get to an app fast. But there's two things we can do that makes this process a lot easier. The first is to stick with the grid view, but customize the location of your favorite apps. You can do this by going into app view, arrangement, and then dragging the apps around. And the easiest spot to reach, at least for me, is in this line here, which is in the middle of the watch face. And the only apps I find myself opening on the Apple Watch are the phone, messages, and the now playing app. And I'll go over why that app is so important later in the video. But conveniently, all of these fit right in the middle. And I then arrange the other apps around that line. But before I even do that, chances are that you have a ton of apps installed on your watch that you don't even need. For me, I see I have Zoom, Schwab, airline apps, and a bunch of others that have no business being on my watch. So I can come here to the watch app, scroll down to the list of apps, and uninstall each one that I don't need. And once that's done, I can then come back to the grid view and arrange them so that the ones I open frequently are placed near the middle. Okay, so now we're going to scroll back up, and I'm going to skip the action button for now and go into general because there's two things we can do here that will make our battery last longer. The first is to go into airplane mode and toggle on the option to mirror iPhone. That way, if you enable airplane mode on either your phone or your Apple Watch, it will automatically activate on the other device as well. And then we're going to go here to background app refresh and disable all the apps that don't really need it. For me, I don't need most of these to refresh, so I turn most of them off. And while we're here, if you like to use an app like Strava or All Trails, then you definitely want that app to stay open on your watch for the entire duration of your run or your hike. And to do that, we can go into return to clock and we can set different settings for different apps. So I leave it at two minutes for default, but then for all trails and for the now playing app, I set it for the maximum amount, which is one hour. And I'll get to why that's important later in the video. And if we go back and scroll down to display and brightness, there are a few things I change here. First, I set the brightness all the way up. I found that I always had plenty of battery to spare at the end of the day when I charge, so there's no reason for me not to have this all the way up as it makes the screen even easier to see during the day. I also increased the text size just a little bit, which makes messages and emails easier to read. And you know when you tap on your watch to wake it and after 15 seconds it goes dark? If you're like me and don't want that, you can change it here to 70 seconds. Okay, so before we go over switching watch faces automatically, 
There's a couple more things I changed. All right, so you know when you go into the control center or the app view and there's a little animation that happens? We can actually disable this, which makes it much snappier, especially on older models. We can do this under accessibility settings, reduce motion. And now if we go to the control center or app view, you can see it loads much faster. And I wouldn't be surprised if this also improves battery life. Another essential setting is enabling your Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. You can do this on your Mac under system settings, login and password, and turning on the option to allow your watch to unlock it. And not a lot of people know this, but you can also use your watch as a way to unlock your phone. But this only works if the phone can still see a part of your face, so if someone else grabs your phone, it won't automatically unlock. This is just so you're able to unlock your phone even when you're wearing a mask or when there's something obstructing your face. And there's also a security feature built in, so if your watch somehow accidentally unlocks your phone or your Mac when you didn't mean to, you can quickly lock it again right from your watch. And a lot of people also don't know that you can actually use your watch to ping your iPhone if you can't find it. You can do this from the control center by tapping this button here, and it'll also direct you to where your phone is. Very nice. All right, so if you have one of the newer models, you can double tap with your thumb and index finger to do a couple of different things. Most people assume that this is just for bringing up your smart stack, but honestly, that's the way I use it the least. One of the ways I use it all the time is when I get a text message, because I can just double tap and it immediately takes me to dictation so that I can reply to others straight from the watch. And to make this even better, make sure you have auto punctuation enabled under settings. Another way I use it is when I'm listening to music. Music. And the way it works out of the box is that if you double tap while music is playing, it will pause the track. But we can actually set it to skip to the next song instead, which for me is definitely more convenient. And we can do this by going to the watch app, gestures, double tap, and instead of play slash pause, tap skip. Now for some reason, this only works if you're on the now playing app and not on, say, the YouTube music app. It might work on Apple Music, but I'm not a subscriber, so I'm not sure. And this is why earlier in the video, when we were arranging the apps, I made sure to place the now playing app in a convenient spot. And it's also why I set it to stay on the screen for the maximum duration. Another thing that's only available to the newer models is sleep apnea detection. And we can turn this on in the health app by scrolling down to the health checklist and enabling sleep apnea notifications. This feature alone is honestly enough of a reason to track your sleep. Not to mention, you get a ton of data to work with. And if you want to learn more about working with data, then I highly recommend checking out today's sponsor, Brilliant.org. Brilliant is a hands-on interactive learning platform and is the best way to learn AI, math, data science, and computer science interactively. Brilliant builds your understanding from the ground up with concepts, which has been proven to be six times more effective than simply watching lecture videos. A great example of that is the course I'm taking right now called Regression and Classification, which teaches you how to use data to make smarter predictions without getting lost in complicated math. This is part of Brilliant's data analysis learning path, which combines multiple courses into a curriculum that you can follow. And this is just one of the many learning paths that you can go through. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Sergio or scan the QR code on the screen. And if you decide to stick with it, you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Okay, so one of the most slept on features of the Apple Watch is that you can sync it with different focus modes that you already use on your other devices. And you can even assign a different watch face to each focus mode so that your watch changes automatically based on what you're doing. And you can set this up by going to the iPhone settings, focus modes, and then for each focus mode that you have, you can choose the watch face that you want to assign to it. And before I show you my watch face for my different focus modes, this is the face I use when I don't have any focus mode activated, which only happens when I'm home. Starting from the top, I have a weather complication, self-explanatory. Then I have a calendar complication that shows the time of my next event. And this is actually really useful because most of the time, that's enough to jog my memory about what's coming up. But if not, I can just tap it to see my full schedule. And then this little dot is from an app called Just Press Record, and I have it on almost all of my watch faces. And what it does is that it lets me record a voice note that automatically gets transcribed and synced to all my Apple devices. I do this multiple times times a day, especially when I'm driving. I'll just think of something that I know I'll forget if I don't write it down, so I just tap it once and speak my thoughts into it. I also use it a lot when I'm walking or at the gym. 
super useful. And as of recently, you can actually do this natively with the app Voice Memos. But I found that the transcription is not as good as the app Just Press Record. Then at the bottom left, I have a complication that lets me fully control my Apple TV. This is just like the one on the iPhone, but on a smaller screen. And not a lot of people know this, but we can trigger shortcuts or control HomeKit devices straight from the watch face. So I have a shortcut to open my garage door, which is super convenient as I go there almost every day. And then lastly, I have this here that I use every single night before I go to bed, which is a HomeKit scene that shuts off every light, TV, and AC in the house. All right, so now let's go into different focus modes. I have an outside focus mode that gets triggered when I leave, and this is what the watch face looks like. And the top part is exactly the same as a default one, but on the bottom, I have a bunch of controls for my car, like opening the trunk, which is really useful when my hands are full, opening the front, which is even more useful since there's no physical button to do it, and then locking it because I'm one of those people that always thinks I left the car unlocked. And when I open my workout app, my workout mode gets triggered. And I have this watch face, which has my rings, a YouTube music complication, and once again, the just press record complication. Nothing fancy. I also have one for when I'm recording that gets triggered once I connect to this one Bluetooth device here in the studio. And it changes my watch face to this lunar one, which even though it's much more crowded, nothing really stands out, so it's not that distracting, and I think it looks pretty cool. Next up, we have traveling, which is the only focus mode that doesn't get automatically triggered, which is fine, because it's not like I do it all the time. And the watch face for it only shows me two widgets. One is for flighty, which shows my flight schedule, and the day of the flight, it shows me the gate and my seat number, which is much more convenient than having to constantly check the phone or the boarding pass. And the other widget is from an app called Tripsy, which shows me what's coming up in my itinerary. And then I also have a time zone widget for Lisbon, so I can always keep track of the time when I'm speaking to friends and family from abroad. This is especially useful when I'm traveling far and the time zone difference is 8 hours or more. And lastly, I have the sleeping watch face that gets triggered by my sleep schedule, and this one behaves differently because it's not an actual watch face. It's set up by the OS and we can't really change much about it. The only thing we can do is to choose whether or not we want the time to show. I choose not to, so for me, it's basically a black screen with the date. And if you have an Apple Watch Ultra, your action button can be mapped to do different things like turning on the flashlight or even to run a shortcut. But where it gets really powerful is when you map it to do different things based on what focus mode you're on. So if you're on work mode, it would do one thing, traveling another, etc. And you can do this by assigning a shortcut to the action button that tells it what to do based on different focus modes. And I left a link in the description to a template that you can use. And once you open it, you can add your specific focus modes here and choose what action you want each one to trigger. Mine looks like this. If no focus mode is turned on, it'll turn on the flashlight. If I'm on sleep mode, it runs a HomeKit scene that shuts off all the lights. If I'm recording, it triggers a scene that shuts off every light here in the studio. And if I'm outside, I have it set to open the gate to my house, which is super useful as I don't have to look at the watch to do it or grab the physical remote. And I did that with this little inexpensive device here that sends signals to the gate and essentially pretends that it's the remote. And I went over this device as well as all the other smart devices in my home in this video here. So I'll see you there.